Before embarking upon a painting or drawing, it is important to step back and evaluate your subject. Not only is a series of objects occupying three-dimensional space, but also has a flat pattern, a jigsaw of interlocking shapes, colours and tones, that adds up to a balanced design. One of the most important goals in composing a picture is achieving a visual balance. In other words, the various elements that make up the image, lines, shapes, colours, tones and textures must be arranged with care. Artists and critics have put forward many theories about this balance. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato expressed what good composition is all about. He stated that composition consists of observing and depicting diversity within unity. In other words, a picture should contain enough variety to keep the viewer interested, but this variety must be restrained and organised to avoid confusion and disunity. Unity and diversity is achieved by introducing elements that relate to and echo each other such as the bottles and bowls in a still life. These visual links are effective because the eye finds related forms more satisfying than unrelated ones. However, notice how Christina Gar has in also introduced diversity, without distracting from the overall unity of the composition by choosing objects of different size and shape and by varying the spaces between them. Asymmetry Formal symmetry lends balance to an image but lacks excitement. An asymmetrical arrangement, on the other hand, maintains visual equilibrium while setting up dynamic tensions and rhythms. Asymmetrical composition can be likened to an old-fashioned scale in which a small but heavy metal weight on one side can balance a much larger pile of objects on the other. In this painting, for instance, there is a counterpoise between active and passive space. The busy clutter of objects serves as a strong attraction but is held in check by the large, simple, stated foreground. Rhythm in a painting or drawing plays the same role as rhythm in music. It draws the different elements together and imparts the composition with a distinct mood. These bending figures are grouped into a beautifully controlled central design in which shapes, patterns, lines and colours repeat and echo each other. This sets up a rhythm which unifies the picture. The positive shapes of objects in a picture are important, as are the negative shapes created by spaces around and between those objects. This picture works on two levels as a representation of the subject and as a two-dimensional design of interlocking shapes. Creating a focal point A representational picture should have one main subject, a focal point to which the viewer's eye is inevitably drawn. Thus, when planning your composition, your first question should be, what do I want to emphasise and how should I emphasise it? Stressing one element is partly a matter of subordinating the others. For example, by keeping the background less detailed and distinct than the foreground, the lyrical beauty of this portrait study derives from the lost and found quality of the drawn and painted marks. The sitter's face is the focus of attention and it is here that Michael Hyam concentrates more detail and colour. The looser treatment of the other elements emphasises the modelling of the features by contrast. Focusing attention There are several devices which the artist can use to bring attention to the centre of interest, such as placing more detail in that area, or more intense colours contrasting shapes or tonal contrast. When a human figure is included in a composition, the eye is inevitably drawn to it, even when, as here, the figure is dwarfed by its surroundings. Notice how the focal point, a dark tone against light, is framed by the arc of the viaduct, giving it further emphasis. When we look at a picture of any kind, we instinctively look for a visual pathway to guide us through the composition and make sense of it. If the elements in the picture are not connected in a pleasing and rhythmical way, we soon lose interest because the picture has a fragmented, incomplete feeling. The drama of this scene is accentuated by the forceful directional lines of the sand dunes. The eye is propelled back in space to the focal point formed where the silver light on the water meets the dark tone of the coastline. The placing of light shapes against dark and dark shapes against light is another way of creating visual pathways for a picture. The eye is attracted by the strong contrast and will jump from one to the next. Remember, however, that the greatest contrast should be reserved for the centre of interest. So keep tonal contrast elsewhere in the painting ready to release subdued. These artworks show several different ways to break up the picture space in a pleasing way that will help you to organise the elements so the viewer's attention falls where you want it.